Hello, it's Steve Rosenbaum here, the founder of the Flawless Follow-Up System, fractional executive, and just a sales guy, right, for, for going on nearly four decades. We all know how hard it is to, to reach people, especially nowadays, right? Reach that all-important VIP. Man, you can't get past the gatekeepers. You can't get past the voicemail and all the, all the stuff that's protecting them from being reached. We all know how hard that is. There is one thing that still works. No, it's not automation on LinkedIn. It's not pestering their inbox until they respond. You know what it is? It's comedy. Comedy works, right? Making people laugh, it busts down barriers. It's been proven to be true for a long, 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 long time. Now, the problem is we're not all that funny, right? But there is one guy who's really funny. His name is John Buchan. He's a friend of mine. Now, you can Google him, Buchan, B-U-C-H-A-N. And John, by the way, J-O-N. No H in there. John is known for sending out a drunk letter in the middle of the night to try to get clients for his business. And this drunk email was so funny that it landed him some huge, huge companies. I think like Red Bull and HP. I mean, big companies that fell in love with John, some guy they'd never even known of, strictly from his email. Now, I also did a, a product years and years and years ago with somebody that did cartoons for New Yorker magazine. And to this day, he still uses cartoons and humor to reach some of the highest ranking executives and, and, and CXOs with any company. The way to bust down those boards, uh, those doors and those boards, the way to bust down those doors is to make them laugh. So what I want to show you is this, because like I said, we can't all be funny, but we can use ChatGPT nowadays, can't we? Now, my friend John, John Buchan, the drunk email guy, what he's done, he has written templates in the past to help people use his humor to bust down these doors, break through these barriers. I've used them. They're great. Now, he's gone and put them into prompts. So, you can go to ChatGPT and write your very own email and get, you know, get through those doors or make sales. Now, what I want to show you is this. I'm currently promoting John's product. Full disclosure, I'm selling it. Yeah, I'm actually selling something from this video. But what I also want to show you is that I used John's techniques to write an email to ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to take you through the history of the thread because the email came out great. It, right, I just sent it out. It's, oh, it's getting mad opens. It's getting mad clicks. We're making sales. It's fantastic. I thought I would take you through and show you exactly how I did it. All right, so what you'll see... You'll see exactly how I did this. And, you know, it's a little bit of crafting. It's a little bit of, I've gotten pretty good at ChatGPT. I do certain things in a certain way. So I took what I know, and I took John's prompts, and I think you're going to love the response. You want to see? Come on over. I'll show you. All right. So here we are inside of ChatGPT. All right. And this is something I did just this morning. Now, whenever I start using ChatGPT, the first thing I do is I want to know what knowledge it has, right? We all see the warning messages that it has a certain cutoff date, I think 2021 as of right now, right? And it'll tell you, man, I don't know anything since 2021, but I want to know what you do know. I want to know where you are so I can figure out what's the gap between where you're at right now and where you want to be. So here's the very first prompt, and I'll, I'll read these out loud, uh, and, and then you'll see how we finally formed this email at the very end. This might take us a few minutes to go through it, but uh, I think you're going to like it because of the detail here. So here we go. The first question I asked, do you know who John Buchan is? And here's my, the response is basically it said as of the cutoff date in September 21, it basically said it didn't know who he was. It asked if I meant this guy from 1875 to 1940, uh, best known for the 39 steps. That's not him. All right. So basically it's telling me it doesn't know John. So I said, well, John Buchan runs a marketing agency. He's famous for creating a drunk email that got him hired by big companies. He's since created instructional copywriting courses and tools that sells under the brand name Charm Offensive. His email uses comedy and humor to get impressive results from cold email and prospecting. The humor breaks down defenses and lowers barriers so that he gets higher responses and conversions. Are you aware of all this? All right, so now that it doesn't know what John, who John is, I'm giving it background information. And once again, it reminds me, I don't know anything since September of 2021. 20, uh, all right. But it says it doesn't know specific uh, details about John, including his humor in email marketing for higher conversions and his creation of the Charm Offensive brand, 
were not part of the information included in my training da data. However, the approach you're describing aligns with a known effective strategy in marketing, where breaking down barriers with humor or unconventional means can help stand out in the crowded fields like email marketing. Boom. Okay, so ChatGPT does know that the technique works. So that's good. We're going to start there. And then goes on to say, regardless, the general concept of using humor, humor and charm in marketing communication is well established. It helps create a positive association with brand. Very important. It's going to differentiate you, right? It breaks through the noise of other marketing messages. Man, that's huge today, right? And it can increase engagement and response rates. What more can we ask for? It's a strategy used by many successful marketers, copywriters, and companies. If John Puckin has become prominent uh, since 2021, it's a, t it's a testament to the effectiveness of his approach. For the most current and specific information about him, go look elsewhere, yada, yada, yada. All right, so I said, hey, no worries. You understand the reasons why this works. John has created a new product called Charming AI, in which he's created training instructions and prompts so that ChatGPT can create outrageously funny emails to be used for cold calling and prospecting. I want to promote Charming AI. Please write a 300-word summary on this product and its benefits. I love to do this. I love to ask ChatGPT, once I give it information, this is where I want to start. Give me a summary now. I want to, I want to see how it spins it. I want to see how it takes the information I gave it and the information it has. And I'm saying, I've got a product I'm promoting. He doesn't know any of the details about the products, which is which is key, by the way, right? Because many times when we promote products, we just go feature, 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 feature. Watch what happens here because ChatGPT knows nothing about the features. It does not know one feature inside the product, yet it's going to go ahead and write a 300-word summary that's pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and read it. Charming AI is an innovative product by acclaimed marketer John Buchan. Known for his unique humor-centric approach to email marketing, Buchan has designed Charming AI to empower users with the same successful strategies he's used to secure high-profile clients. That's a great opening sentence. Again, ChatGPT knows nothing about John, knows nothing more than what I told him, does not know anything about the product, nothing about the features, but it's already writing good copy about what it does, about the results it's going to get, and about who's behind it. Charming AI is more than a simple instructional course. It's a comprehensive toolkit that not only provides users with a solid foundation and effective humor-based marketing, but also offers tangible tools to apply to these learnings in a real-world situation. The heart of this product lies in its integration with advanced AI technology like ChatGPT to generate en engaging, humor-infused emails. That is a perfect paragraph describing what it does. So it's taken general knowledge and it's right dead bang on. A significant benefit of using Charming AI is the ability to stand out in the crowded email marketing landscape. Boom! Conventional cold emails often go unnoticed amidst a barrage of business communications that fill up inboxes. Boom! Boom! In contrast, the humor-laced emails created with Charming AI break through this clutter, attracting attention and fostering positive associations with your, your brand. Check mate. Perfect. Moreover, Charming AI helps lower defenses. Yes, it does. It's well documented that people are more receptive to messages that make them laugh or make them smile. By incorporating humor, the emails produced using Charming AI can enhance engagement and significantly boost response rates. This, in turn, can lead to increased conversion rates con uh, contributing directly to your bottom line. What? Oh, my God. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Let this be a lesson to all of us about writing copy, Right? Writing copy, it's never about the features. It's always about the results. It's always about the feeling. It's always about what's in it for me. And ChatGPT is proving it right here. Lastly, Charming AI's remarkable time-saving tool. Instead of spending hours crafting the perfect email, users can leverage the power of AI to generate compelling copy. The product includes prompts and instructions to guide this process, ensuring that the resulting emails are not only funny, but also effectively serve their marketing purpose. I didn't tell it any of this but it came out perfect. To sum up, Charming AI with its combination of humor-infused marketing strategies and advanced AI technologies promises a fresh, impactful, and efficient approach to email marketing. Whether you're a marketing veteran or a newcomer, Charming AI provides a unique edge to help you stand out and achieve your marketing goals. Now, not only do I love that, I could use this. I could use that right now. I might. I might actually just send out an email like this, right? Because I'm not going to put humor in every single email about uh, charming. 
Some people, they want to know the nuts and bolts behind it. This is a good, as good as it gets. But the other thing is this. This is why I asked it to do this. It helps me know, does ChatGPT understand what's going on? Now I know, without a doubt, I know where ChatGPT stands. I know its understanding, and I feel real good about continuing from here. So, this is where I start getting into it. Great. Now pretend you are a marketer with a list of consultants and salespeople. Write me a funny email to promote Charming AI. So now you see this, a lot of people will just go straight into things and ask it to, they, they might start with a prompt like this, and then they don't like the result. But because I took the time to give it the background, to frame it, to get ChatGPT on the right wavelength, here's the first email. And the first email, I just could say, pretty damn good. Subject. Unleash the chuckles, turbocharge your conversions with some emojis. And emojis are proven to convert. Hey there, what do a rubber chicken, a whoopee cushion, and your last cold email have in common? That's right. None of them got the reaction you were hoping for. Look, I get it. You're not a stand-up comedian. You're a supercharged, results-focused consultant or salesperson. All about the hustle and the grind. But let me tell you a secret. Laughter is the best transaction lubricant. Man, this stuff is already brilliant. I'm, I'm having a little remorse right now because I know the end of the story and, and I didn't use some of these paragraphs, which are damn good. Darn it. Okay, but I still like the result. Enter Charming AI. Picture a laugh factory and a marketing powerhouse combined. Then inject it into AI's silicone brain. It's like if Hal 9000 and Jerry Seinfeld had a baby. A baby that writes hilarious attention-grabbing cold emails that scream, read me now in a charming, non-threatening kind of way. Wow, that's phenomenal stuff. But here's the kicker. With Charming AI, not only do you get more eyeballs on your emails, you get more smiles. And smiles are just one step away from replies, which are just one step away from conversions. Thinking of, think of Charming AI as a digital comedy writer, tirelessly brainstorming punchlines at the speed of light, Expect instead, except instead of a Netflix special, you're getting special attention in inboxes flooded with the same old pitches. Say goodbye to yawn-inducing templates and hello to the wacky, whimsical world of creative marketing. It's not just about standing out. It's about standing out while making your prospects giggle, chuckle, and even roll on the floor laughing. Their way to clicking that reply button. Still not sure? That's okay. Skepticism, skepticism can be healthy. But, you, but have you ever seen a skeptical person laughing their socks off? Me neither. <laughs> that happens to be funny. So jump on board the Charming AI Express today. Remember the inbox arena. The one who wields humor is the one who wins. Let's make inboxes a funnier place, one email at a time, laughing all, way, all the way to the bank. Now, this is a great email, but there's one thing about this email, okay? It, it is a great email for explaining what this is all about. Now, by the way, when you send out emails, you're going to send out emails with different styles, different tones. I wanted to write a funny email today to promote how to write funny emails, all right? Some people, they are persuaded by logic. They want, they want the facts. They want the logic. This is a great logical email. There's not much humor in it. This was an okay, all right? This got me to laugh, right? Have you ever seen a skeptical person laughing their socks off? Me neither. I happen to think that was funny, okay? But aside from that... It's a fantastic, logical email. I'll probably use it, but it's not what I wanted right now. Now I wanted to inject some humor in it. So guess what? Now I've got my starting point. Now I open up John Buchan's product, Charming AI, and I start taking out info about it. Now let me pause this a second. I want to open the document. Okay, here it is. It's open. Now, now take a look. Okay, I'm inside of the Charming AI pack. This is what we're selling. I want you to see something here. It's 147 pages long. Now, John does a great job. He's got things separated here. Here's opening lines. Here's body copy. Here's sales lines. And what, what John does is he teaches you known comedic formula, all right? John is a trained comedian. He knows this stuff. So, look, here is something, and it's a technique, and it's called the hyperbole backpedal. And he says here, I'll show you this one prompt. I'm obviously not going to show you all the prompts. Hey, I'm going to show you a comedy copy technique called the hyperbole backpedal. We recently got an office in Chapham North, and I'm looking to win new clients over to our side and away from those evil, okay, maybe not evil, but not as good other agencies. 
What I do here is I make a bold statement. I call the other agencies evil, away from those evil. Then I backpedal immediately. Okay, maybe not evil, but not as good. So right there is where he is training ChatGPT about the hyperbole backpedal. And then he asks a ChatGPT response. That's an interesting technique you've described, known as the hyperbole backpedal. By using hyperbole to make a strong statement and then quickly backpedaling or downplaying it, you create a humorous, humorous effect that engages your audience and adds a lighthearted touch to your message. It can be a useful tool in comedy writing or in formal communication to bring attention to a point while maintaining a playful tone. Thanks for sharing this technique. So, you'll actually see in my final email, I use the hyperbole backpedal. You'll see it. So, what I want to show you is I went through John's 147 pages and I picked various techniques to take the original email and buck it up. All right? <laughs> John Bucken, buck it up. All right? So, let's go back here and now you're going to see where I start training ChatGPT. And I say, okay, this is good. I want you to save it as Bucken version 1 so we can refer back to it. I'm going to show you right here. I'm going to show you a, co a comedy copy technique called the hyperbole backpedal. I literally copied all that right from John's Google Doc and I put it in there. All right? right okay, it says right there. Right? There it is. All right? And it responds. Sure, your technique is called the hyperbole backpedal. Sounds intriguing. It allows for a bold attention-grabbing statement followed by a playful retraction. Uh, adding humor and charm while keeping the message grounded. Let's revise the earlier email. So it goes right away and it revises this email and it puts in right here a hyperbole backpedal. Yes, I'm talking about turning your emails into an unstoppable laugh-inducing force. Okay, maybe not unstoppable, but definitely more engaging. So that was okay. It did okay. Now the rest of this email is essentially the same. Each version changes a little bit. I'm not going to read each and every version. You'll see when we get down to the end, it does change a little bit. Okay, but a lot of the core is in place. So it gets through, it gave me this. I liked it, but I asked it for more. I got down to the bottom here and I said, okay, now that was good, but I'd like to see 10 more examples of the hyperbole backpedal that can be used in this email. Only show me the hyperbole backpedals. I will choose which one I want to use in the final email. So this is something you're going to see me do throughout putting this email together. I ask it for 10 examples. Once I use John's prompts to get something, I say, now give me 10 more examples so I could choose what I want. Some of these are outstanding. I mean, these really got me laughing. I'm going to, I'm going to read them to you and hopefully I can control myself, right? Charming AI is a rocket fuel for your emails. Well, maybe not rocket fuel, but it definitely gives them a much needed boost. Okay, pretty good. With Charming AI, your conversions will soar higher than Mount Everest, or at least higher than the puny little hill your current results are sitting on. I like this, okay? I like that a lot. Charming AI can turn your emails into a tension bag that's stronger than a black hole. Okay, maybe not quite that strong, but certainly stronger than your refrigerator magnet. I love that. That happens to be the one that I chose, all right? Our AI is so advanced, I could probably win a Pulitzer Prize for comedy. Well, maybe not a Pulitzer, but it would definitely get a few chuckles at your local comedy club. Cute. Using charming AI is like having a team of Hollywood scriptwriters on your side. Okay, maybe not Hollywood level, but better than those dull corporate lingo spewing bots. <laughs> it's actually making a little joke at itself, right? Your emails will be funnier than a clown juggling flaming chainsaws. All right, maybe not that hilarious, but they'll at least get a hearty laugh. Our AI is a Mozart of humor, crafting symphonies of laughs. Well, not Mozart, but certainly a talented garage band. I like that, right? All right. Hey, with charming AI, your cold emails will be as charming as a basket of puppies. Well, maybe not that charming, but definitely more charming than your average sales pitch. Charming AI will make your emails more addictive than the most riveting telenovela. Okay, maybe not that dramatic, but they'll definitely keep your readers hooked. Our AI could easily be the next big stand-up uh, sensation. Well, maybe not ready for the big stage, but definitely could get some giggles in a local open mic night. All right. I thought those were good, right? And I did tell it I want to use number three, right? So, hey, Kay, I say, okay, this is good. I made a couple of slight modifications. Please insert this into the email. Charming AI can turn your emails into attention, uh, into attention magnet stronger than a black hole. Okay, maybe not a black hole, but certainly stronger than a refrigerator magnet. So, it took that and it now gave me a new version of the email with my hyperbole in here. It's not that one. It's right here, all right? And it goes down here and it says, I'm now saving this as version number three. And I say, great. Now, here's another technique I'm going to show you. Uh, it's the give me your money backpedal technique. I like this. 
This is like your hyperbole backpedal I've already shown you, but it's a specific device used at the end of a sales page or sales emails. It starts by using a non-specific phrase such as summon the courage to join me on this rebellious journey. The next sentence translates what I actually mean in crude terms rather than fluffy terms. And by join me on this rebellious journey, I mean hand me your hard-earned money as soon as possible without hesitation. <laughs> I love this. All right. The, these really got me laughing. I asked for 10 examples that I could use in my email. Here we go. So take the leap of faith and embark on this delightful journey of email renaissance with me. And by embark on this delightful journey, I mean click that purchase button faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> what a great call to action, right? Let's unite and bring a revolution to your email marketing game. And by bring a revolution, I mean dig into your wallet and get your credit card ready. <laughs> This stuff is fantastic. All right. Hey, are you ready to hop aboard the fun train to email engagementville? And by that, I mean, are you ready to exchange a reasonable sum for an absurdly valuable service? That's cute, too. Hey, it's time to ascend the Olympus of email marketing with charming AI. Or in layman's terms, it's time to pull out your credit card and hit that purchase button. <laughs> I, th I think these are some of the best calls to action I've ever seen. Let's ride together on this roller coaster of humor-infused success. And by ride together, I mean kindly transfer funds into my account. <laughs> All right. Join me in the echelons of the email elite, by which I mean send us your payment details sooner than you could say conversion rate. Let's set sail on the good ship charming AI. Or to put it more plainly, let's get to the part where there was, let's get you to part ways with some cash. <laughs> <laughs> venture with me to the laughed out loud land of prosperous emailing and by venture with me I by venture with me I mean pay us for this hilariously effective service let's leap into the future of email marketing together which is a poetic way of saying please enter your credit card details <laughs> ready to join the revolution and overthrow the email marketing status quo and by join the revolution I mean grab your wallet and get ready to invest all right, man. I absolutely love those. Uh, I, I could have used almost any one of them. And I said, let's go with this. Venture with me into the laugh out loud land of prosperous emailing. And by venture with me, I mean it's time to pull out your credit card and hit that purchase button. I just love that. All right. So here we go. Um, and it's it's just giving me the next version here. It's saving it as version four. All right. I'm going to teach it another. This is great. I love this. I'm going to teach you a technique called the silly list, list technique. This is where you tell the reader about your services and, and make the last list item something silly. Here's an example. I used to work at large digital agencies with big brand clients offering online marketing services, SEO, PPC, social media, analytics, content creation, and bedroom tidying. Can you give me 10, and then I ask it, can you give me 10 examples of a silly list for me to choose from the email? These lists are all must fit with the product we're promoting except the silly item. Now, by the way, it's important for you to know I added this. Can you give me 10 examples? All right. John's prompts always stop here. John always explains. All right. John always explains what it is. Now I'm giving it the specific instructions. This is something that I added to this process. I want it to give me 10 examples so I can pick the one that makes me laugh the most. All right. Or so I can do some split testing, right? So sure, here are 10 examples of the silly list technique. Hey, with Charming AI, your emails will be optimized for open rates, click-through rates, conversions, customer engagement, and sandwich making. Our AI is trained in copywriting, humor, persuasion, conversion, optimization, and inexplicably alpaca grooming. Charming AI brings benefits to your sales and marketing efforts like better engagement, improved conversions, stronger relationships, and an inexplicable, inexplicable urge to do the Macarena. With Charming AI, you can expect improvements to your email open rates, response rates, click-through rates, conversion rates, and your ability to do a perfect handstand. <laughs> Charming AI will revolutionize your cold emails with personalized humor, improved open rates, boosted conversions, stronger customer connections, and a random fascination with origami. Charming AI specializes in email engagement, open rates, conversion rates, return on investment, and surprisingly, interpretive dance. The tools of Charming AI include analytics, humor-infused templates, personalized copy, actionable insights, and a spoon for stirring your morning coffee. Charming AI is skilled in improving open rates, boosting conversion rates, strengthening customer relations, and for some reason, juggling. With Charming AI, we're enhancing email personalization, increasing engagement, boosting conversions, building stronger customer relationships, and mastering the art of yo-yoing. 
Charming AI a prom- promises improvement in your email campaigns, open rates, click-through rates, customer engagement, and impromptu karaoke sessions. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so I chose one. Number three is perfect. Number three, Charming AI brings benefits to your sales and marketing efforts like better engagement, improved conversions, stronger relationships, and an inexplicable urge to do the Macarena. Awesome. All right, now... It's so now it's rewrite each time it's rewriting the email and it's adding my humorous tone in it. All right. And it's so the email is getting better and better and better and funnier and funnier and funnier. Now you're doing great. Now we're going to close it out with the silly gift technique in the PS. I will use AI to create an image of the silly gift. Here's what the silly gift is. And this is where I go ahead and copy and paste John's prompt in here. And then I ask it to give me 10 examples and recommend the image to create using the AI. So this is something else. I said recommend the image. Certainly here are 10 examples. P.S. I've attached an image of a pug wearing a monocle and a top hat. His name is Sir Woofington. I firmly believe this will convince you of our undeniable charm. And then it tells me to create an AI image of a pug and a monocle and a top hat. P.S. In close, you'll find an image of a raccoon in a business suit. His name is Racket. He's sure to seal the deal with his sheer adorableness. And number three, P.S. To sweeten the deal, here's an image of a koala dressed as a superhero. Meet Captain Eucalyptus. I'm pretty sure this will tip the scales in our favor. (laughs) P.S. I've included a picture of a bunny wearing a sombrero. Her name is Senorita Fluff. Surely this will make you giggle into agreement. P.S. Just to cap this all off, here's an image of a, hedg- of a hedgehog donning a Sherlock Holmes-style detective out- outfit. I call him Sherlock Spines. I trust his cuteness will push you over the edge to yes. Number six. P.S. I've appended an image of a llama in a tutu. Meet Primo Lamarina. I'm positive her grace will pirouette you into cooperation. Number seven. P.S. Attached a picture of a duck wearing a pirate hat and an eye patch. Say ahoy to Captain Quackbeard. I believe his quirky charm will have you signing on the dotted line. AI, AI created using a duck in a pirate costume. P.S. Here's a picture of you. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Here's a picture of a squirrel in a spacesuit. Let's call him Astronaut. I'm sure his cosmic cuteness will coax you into compliance. By the way, John talks about alliteration. This is great alliteration right here. Number nine. P.S. To leave you on a high note, here's an image of a penguin playing the ukulele. Meet Penguilele, I'm hoping this will strum you into submission. <laughs> and P.S. as a parting gift, here's an image of a goat in a superhero cape introducing Super Bleat. <laughs> I trust his heroic cuteness will make you agree. <laughs> and I say let's use number six, which was the llama. The llama and the tutu. And so it gives me the final, 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 final email. All right. And... Um, but I corrected it. I said, this is almost perfect, but I want the PS. I've attached a little gift and an image of the llama, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm positive her grace and her beauty will pair what you right into making your purchase now. I wanted a little bit of alliteration there too. It said pair what you into something. I said purchase. All right. So it gives me that final version. We're getting close to the bottom. All right. And... I, now I added this. This has nothing to John did not do this, but I added this. We're going to have a timer on the event. Yes, it's going to end soon. Let's do one more PPS. This one me- needs to make a joke about this being a limited time offer and to visit the page to see if you have any time left. Give me 10 funny options. And here we go. Now here's the great thing about this. By this time, ChatGPT is well trained. We've given it lots of prompts. We've told it exactly what we want. So now, even if I give it some instructions that aren't exactly in John's style, it's now trained. It's got all this data to draw upon that is going to come out and it's going to sound real good. Even though I'm not that funny. I'm not John Bucking, but it's going to buck it up. So here we go. PPS is a limited time offer, like the half-life of a mayfly. So you might want to head over to our site to check if any seconds remain on your laughter clock. PPS, quick note, this is this offer is more limited than a sloth sprinting career. Best to check out this page now to see if there's any time left. PPS is a limited time offer, much like my attempt to break the world record for hot dog eating. You better visit the site pronto to see if there's any time left or hot dogs uh, left. All right. PPS, just a heads up, this offer has a lifespan shorter than a goldfish's memory. So swim on over to our website before you forget to see if there's any time left. 
PPS. Remember, there's a limited time offer as fleeting as a shooting star or my gym membership. Best to race over to your site now to see if there's any time left. You know, it's done a good job of using the verb that ties in with the example. PPS, fair warning. This offer has less time in his hands than a chameleon in a crayon box. Okay, I'm not sure about that, but it's kind of funny. You'd better scuttle over to our site to see if there's any time left. Scuttle's a funny word. All right, it's doing a great job. PPS, just FYI, this offer has less longevity than my New Year's resolution to quit chocolate. Might want to hop over to our site to see if there's any time left. PPS, heads up, this offer is limited, like the amount of time I can hold a yoga pose. So I'd go and check the site now to see if there's any time left. Self-deprecation, very funny. PPS, just so you know, this offer expires faster than the smell of freshly baked cookies in the office. Better hurry to our page to see if you still have time left. PPS is a friendly reminder. This offer runs out quicker than my patients in a traffic jam. Better dash over now to see if there's any time left. All right, and I told it to use number four. That was the goldfish one. Now, now, at the very end, guess what I saved to the very, very end? The subject line. Okay, the subject line. Now, there's, I actually ran out of time on, on ChatGPT. Uh, so, uh, but I got some good ones. And I said, okay, perfect. Let's use number four. Now they should invoke curiosity. Okay, no. Now I want to have 10 of the funniest headlines you can think of. They should invoke curiosity so people want to open and read. Use emojis where it makes sense. It gave me 10. I really didn't like them all that much because I didn't feel like they were doing what I asked. I didn't feel like they were focusing on the results. I didn't feel like they were invoking curiosity. How to get your prospects LOLing all the way to the bank? Eh, it's okay. Transferring your inbox into a comedy club? Watch conversion soar? Eh, I mean, this is good. I mean, this is a result people want, but I just don't, it just isn't doing it for me. Get ready to roll on the floor laughing, unleashing the power of humor in your emails. So what? Why is that important to have humor in your emails? It's not. The results are important, okay? So we can explain why you need to use humor in your email, but not the subject line. That takes more than a few words. All right, look at this. Outrageously funny emails, not just a myth anymore. So what? Okay, why is it important to have outrageously funny emails? That's not what we want. We want the results. So I give it instructions here. Here, these are the ones I liked best. Ignite your sales. Yes, that's what we want. Okay, that's the result we want. I like the fact that it starts with the result that we want. Ignite your sales with side-splitting emails. You won't believe the secret. That's actually not bad. That actually isn't bad. Banish boring emails forever. Make your prospects go bananas with laughter. It's okay. I actually said this is one of the good ones. I, I now think it's only okay. Bursting with laughter. Transform your cold emails into comedy hotspots. I actually don't like that one either too much. I think 8 is the best of all of these. And, but what I did do is I said 8, 9, and 10 are the best, but they're still not there. I like those because they're about achieving the results they desire, such as breaking down barriers, reaching hard-to-reach people, blowing past gatekeepers. Now try 10 more. All right, I went through a few iterations. I wasn't liking what I was getting. So finally, at the very, very end, I gave it one more John Bucken prompt for an e for email subject line. And um, here's what it is. See, I go through this several times. I'm not liking the results. I'm not liking the results. Okay, so... I think here it is. Three and seven are the best, but they're still not even that good. Let's try something else. Now, this is a John Bucken prompt. Subject, apologies in advance. This works because the prospect doesn't know who I am and it's a cold pitch. I'm a stranger in their inbox. They see the subject line where I'm apologizing, but they don't know why. As such, they're inclined to wonder why a stranger is apologizing to them. It gets your attention, and they open the email. Give me 10 examples of this, please. All right. So now, um, it gives me 10 variations, and those were okay. Still wasn't liking it. And um, some of these have a little promise. Can you follow the same formula but tie them into comedy at all? All right, and I think we start getting good right about here. No, still, I'm moving in the right direction. You can see it had the hardest time with the subject lines, but I kept hitting it. I kept saying, I kept saying you're getting closer. I kept giving it examples of what I like, but I kept saying you're not quite there, right? 
you're moving in the right direction. Here are some more variations of these subject lines. Okay, and I tell it specifically. If it gives me 10, I say, okay, going back to here, give me 3, 5, and 9. Give me more variations. Finally, and it keeps talking about dad jokes. And I said, why do you keep talking about dad jokes? What else can we say? Sure, let's try using other elements of the humor that aren't specific to dad jokes. And I think this is where we finally got it right. Okay, advance apologies for the comedy bomb about to drop. No, okay. Um, no, 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 no. All right. Um, I think I like this one. Caution, email known to cause a laugh out loud epidemic. All right, now. I like the curiosity aspect of it. It does not get to the point of making conversions, but I do think there's good curiosity there. Who does not want to see something funny, right? And then here we go. Same thing here. Apologies in advance for the surprise laugh attack. Now, what we know is this. There is a technique of writing subject lines called blind subject lines. These are essentially blind. You don't know what the email's about, but the curiosity about, well, what makes them so funny? Are they really that funny? That's what's going to get the open. That's what's going to get the click. And I just sent them a while ago, and they are. They're getting the opens. They're getting the clicks. So it's working. All right, you want to see the final email, including my picture of the llama? Let me pull it up. Okay, here we go. Two copies. Uh, same email. So I'm split testing. I took two emails. I split them half and half. They're almost performing identical. All right, so first one, apologies in advance for the surprise laugh attack. And caution, email known to cause a laugh out loud epidemic. So you can see here, they got the emojis. Maybe we should put the emojis at the front, but um, they work. All right, they work. So let's go through this. Here it is. Hey there, what do a rubber chicken, a whoopee cushion, and your last cold email have in common? That's right. None of them got the reaction you were hoping for. But what if your cold emails could pack more punch than a rubber chicken and elicit more laughter than a well-timed whoopee cushion? Yes, I'm talking about turning your emails into attention-attracting magnets stronger than the deepest black hole. Okay, but maybe not a black hole, but certainly much stronger than a refrigerator magnet. What is that? Hyperbole backpedal, right? Enter Charming AI. There's a link. Folks, right now, go click on it. All right. Charming AI is not just about adding a dash of humor to your emails, because why is that important? Charming AI revolutionizes the way you engage with your prospects. With Charming AI, you're not just standing out, you're standing up, and you're performing a full-blown comedy routine in an inbox full of monotone monologues. I love that. Alliteration, standing out, standing up above everybody else because they're monotone, they're monologues. You are funny, you're standing up, you're rising above the crowd. Charming AI brings benefits to your sales and prospecting efforts, like reaching hard-to-reach VIPs, blowing past grumpy gatekeepers, snagging hard-to-snag appointments, and the inexplicable urge to do the Macarena. Okay? Silly list, right? You guys know where that came from. I will say I added um, I added this uh, in terms of the results we're trying to do. Reaching hard-to-reach VPs, blowing past grumpy gatekeepers. Use a little alliteration there and snagging hard-to-snag appointments. I wanted to use a consistency of hard-to-reach VPs and snagging, hard, right, reaching hard-to-reach VPs and snagging hard-to-snag appointments and the inexplicable urge to do the Macarena. Skeptical. I get it. But here's the thing. Laughter is the secret weapon in the war for attention. Humor breaks down walls, sparks joy, and most importantly, opens wallets. I love that, right? So, are you ready to transform your cold emails from snooze fest to laugh fest? To snatch your prospects from the jaws of those absolutely horrendous, okay, maybe not horrendous, but certainly less entertaining competitors. It put this in there. I didn't even ask it to. It put another hyperbole backpedal in there. So venture with me into the laugh out loud land of prosperous emailing. And by venture with me, I mean it's time to pull out your credit card and hit that purchase button. Okay, that's it. That's, that's the silly... Call to action. I forget exactly what he called that, right? But I love that. What a great call to action. Notice, that's even the first link I put in there, I think, right? Oh, I put one up here, okay? But great call to action. I, I, you, I've got no shame and say, pull out your credit card. Why? Because I know you're chuckling right now. I know you're chuckling right at this moment. You, you normally would not put pull out your credit card as a call to action. That's, that almost sounds like, like a copywriting sin, but right now it feels right because I know you're laughing. 
Let's inject some humor into those inboxes and laugh our way to the bank one email at a time. Yours in giggles and conversions. Steve Rosenbaum. P.S. In a blatant attempt to win you over, I've attached a little gift. An image of a llama in a tutu. Meet Prima Lamarina. I'm positive her grace and beauty will pair what you right into making your purchase. Prima even has a $100 discount coupon for you. Use the coupon Steve Discount at checkout. Look at there. There's a llama in a parouette. Guess where I got that? AI. AI. I just went to AI. I went to Mid Journey. I said, give me a picture of a llama wearing a tutu. That's it. There she is. She's beautiful. That is Prima Lamarina. PPS. PPS. Just a heads up, this offer has a lifespan shorter than a goldfish's memory, so swim on over to our website before you forget to see if there's any time left. And then a final one added by me, PPPS. This email was written using John Buchan's charming AI. You know I'm not this funny. And there you go. All right, so what do you think? That is fantastic, isn't it? I, I'm hoping you already have John Buchan's charming AI. If you don't, you need to do what? You need to swim over to the website to see if there's still time left because it's a limited time offer. And even if the clock expires, either the product's going to come down or the discount's going to go away. Something horrible is going to happen. So guess what? It's time to venture with me. In other words, get that credit card out of your wallet, head over to the site, join me for Charming AI. I hope you've had as much fun with me presenting this as I had doing it. I mean, I was laughing the entire time. You're going to be laughing too, but you know what's more important? Those people you send these messages to, those people on LinkedIn that are so tired of getting hit with the spam and, 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 and you know, the same old message over and over and over again, you're going to stand out. If you send out cold email, you're going to stand out. You're trying to break down, you know, reach those hard to reach VIPs, snag those hard to snag appointments. Charming AI is going to give you your best shot at doing it. And even if you're not funny, like, I'm not funny, right? You can do this. John has made it totally easy. And I hope that you seeing my example of how I warm it up, how I train it, and how I ask it for more examples so I could choose the best of the best. I'm really, really happy with the outcome of this email. That's how I got it to this stage. Can't wait to see you on the other side. See you soon. Bye-bye.